and welcome to this edition of All About Hopkington, the original HKM series created to bring you the people and organizations that help make our community the great place that it is. I'm Jim Cousins, sitting in for Mary Arnott. Now, there are a lot of groups out there and a lot of people dedicating their time, energy, and talents to improve some aspect of life in Hopkington. I am privileged to be sitting here talking with them and sharing their stories with you. Joining me today is Jennifer Richards, Senior Fundraiser Coordinator of the MDA, located in Westboro. Jennifer, Jenny, welcome back to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. First thing I've got to say is the last time you were here, you weren't Jenny Richards. You were Jenny Kniss, so congratulations. Thank you. All right. And actually, for our viewers at home, if you're interested in learning more about Jenny's story, you should look at the episode that we aired last August 2016, where we talked about her story and how she came to get to where she is. So having gone through all that, I would like to just dive right in and let's talk about the MDA. Sounds great. So the first thing for anybody who may not know, I mean, they probably know it's Muscular Dystrophy Association. So what do you guys exist for and what do you do? So we're fighting to free individuals and the families who love them from the harmful effects of muscular dystrophy, ALS, and 41 other neuromuscular diseases. Okay, 41 other. So 43 altogether, that, yep. that's a lot. Yeah. Um, are they all related or are they in the same kind of family of diseases? They're all neuromuscular. So. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And do you know how, how long the NDA has been around doing that? I believe since 1954. Oh, wow. Really? Um, Hmm. So that's like, it's like a really, that's a lot. That's a lot of different things. And so you're a senior fundraiser. Yep. And you're located in, uh, I believe, the Westboro office, we said. Yep. And are there any other offices in Massachusetts? Not in Massachusetts, no. So you guys there cover the entire state. Yep, the whole state. All right. So um, let's talk about what the MDA does. Now, you're a senior fundraiser, so I understand they, they fundraise to... Um, help provide funding to er eradicate these diseases, and what other things does the MDA do? Yep, so we do, like you said, we fund research in 12 different countries. That's our biggest focus. Okay. Um, and we provide services, like we have a loan closet where we provide gently used equipment free of charge to people who need it. Mm -hmm. We have four care centers in Massachusetts where they're all multidisciplinary, where people can go and see every doctor they need to see in one visit. Okay. We also have a week-long summer camp where children with muscular dystrophy can go free of charge, which mm -hmm. is coming up next week. What is that camp called? It's just called MDA Summer Camp. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's up in Maine, so that'll be a great week next week. We have Firefighter Day on Tuesday where all firefighters that we work with are invited to come up for the day and they do activities with the kids and get to know them. Mm -hmm. And then we have Sponsor Day on Thursday where all of our sponsors can get to build relationships with the kids, so it's a really great thing. Okay. Um, sponsors, define sponsors for me. So anybody that has chosen us um, to be somebody that they support. So, for okay. instance, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with DECA, but it's a program, it's a business-based program for high school students. Mm -hmm. um, and they've chosen us as their charity of choice because they're wonderful and we uh. love them. <laughs> um, so they're invited to come. And then Genzyme and Price Chopper and Shaw's and all okay. of the people that help us raise money to beat these diseases. Now, what was that first one with the high school kids? What's the name of that? DECA. DECA. And, and what do they do with you? So they do things called Miracle Minutes. So they mm. have these big conferences. And for 60 seconds, they'll announce that they're going to be doing a Miracle Minute. And all of the DECA officers, these awesome high school kids, will run around the audience with bags and collect as much money as they can in one minute. And everybody dumps their pockets. Mm -hmm. And so they do a lot of money for us. It's great. Um, what audience? What do you mean? Like you said, they run around the audience. Oh, in, it's, it's like, so it's a conference. So all of the kids that are involved in the DECA program, mm -hmm. they are sitting oh. there in the auditorium. Okay, so they're there for, for their program. Yep. And then this group of kids, they run around for a minute and collect money for yep. you. I see. Okay. All right. And um, some of the other sponsors, I think you had mentioned earlier Price Chopper yep. is a sponsor. Yep. So they do our shamrock program where in March you can go to the store and they'll ask you if you want to buy a shamrock for MDA. Mm -hmm. So all of that money goes to us and so mm -hmm. we greatly appreciate Price Chopper and mm -hmm. Shaw's and 
all of our other wonderful sponsors. Right, right. So um, let's talk for a minute about the four care centers. So I'm not really sure like what happens at a, at a care center. So basically if somebody is registered um, with MDA, they will go to this care center. And even mm -hmm. if they're not, sometimes um, like, for example, it, at UMass in Worcester, it's an ALS clinic. Mm -hmm. um, so a person could just go there with ALS, not realizing that it's an MDA funded care center. And um, they'll, they'll, there will be a family care services person there from MDA mm -hmm. who can provide them with information on MDA and help them get registered with us if they're not. Mm -hmm. And then once they are, they're able to see every doctor and specialist that they need to see in one visit. So it saves them a lot of time and ha hassle, excuse oh, me. I see, okay. And so there's one in Worcester. Do you know where the other three are located? Yep, um, there's one in Boston. I believe there's two in Boston, one in Worcester, and then one in another town that I don't remember the name okay. of. Okay, <laughs> okay. Oh, so that's really, that's really kind of neat. Yeah. Um, so with the, the funding that you are helping uh, to raise, um, can you tell me anything that's happening on the uh, fighting muscular dystrophy front? Yeah, so it's actually been a very exciting past eight months. Mm -hmm. um, we've had four drugs that have had major advancements um, by the FDA that we've helped fund. One to treat ALS, um, which is huge. That hasn't happened in over 20 years. Mm -hmm. One, two to treat Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is the most prevalent in young boys. And then one to treat spinal muscular atrophy. Okay. So, you know, you mentioned that, uh, young boys. What, is there any kind of average age of onset, or is it all over the place? Um, I think it's normally in the younger years, Okay. Um, but I'm honestly not positive. Sure. No, I mean, hey, you're not a doctor, neither am I. <laughs> I get that. Um, so, wow, that's really exciting news about, about those uh, drugs progressing. Yeah. It's I'm sure it's a long exciting. road with the FDA. Yep. <laughs> it's a slow process, but we're getting there, and the money that we're raising is making a difference. Mm -hmm. So it's a great time to bring as much money in as we can. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about a couple of the events that are coming up on your calendar. Um, but before I get to that, you know, if people are hearing about the MDA and they're interested, um, how do you get the word out, and how do people connect with your organization? So we're big on social media. We also do mailings where we send out information mm -hmm. um, and we send out information to newspapers and things like that. Okay. So okay. it's a lot of word of mouth and families that end up being registered with us, their mm -hmm. connections and whatnot. Okay. And at the end of the show, we'll have all that kind of contact information, your Facebook page and your website, um, anything else at the end so people in the audience can, can connect with you. Great. All right, so let's talk about some of the events. Um, I, you had said something earlier about something with chili. <laughs> yes, so um, on January 27th, there's going to be the Central Mass Firefighters Chili Challenge. Okay. So it's the first time that this has ever happened in this area, so we're really excited about that. So basically, it'll be a bunch of fire departments competing to see who can make the best chili and everybody is welcome to buy a ticket and come to the event. It's unlimited chili, and mm -hmm. then you get to vote for the best fire department. No kidding. Yeah. So where is that going to be held? It's going to be at, I might say this wrong, but Maroney's Park in Shrewsbury. Okay. So okay. it's a great venue. Um, do you know how many um, fire departments you guys signed up for? We're hoping to have about 15. Okay. We just pretty much launched it today. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Um, Hmm. I wonder if it's going to be like, like the hottest chili or just the best overall. It'll be like the best overall. Okay. So there'll be, um, we'll have different chefs. There'll be a chef's choice and they'll vote on the best one. And uh -huh. then there'll be people's choice. So the people who are just attending the event, they'll get to vote as well. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. So that's coming at the end of January. Yeah. Sounds tasty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else you got on your docket? So on September 9th, we have Ashland Fire Department going out on the streets to do their annual boot drive. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's in the area, it's a great day to drive through the center of town. Yep. Um, we have Littleton Beer Tasting coming up on, let's see if I can remember the date here. 
October 11th. I could be wrong on that, okay. uh, but if you check our Facebook page, you'll be able to find out. Exactly. Yep. Um, so that'll be at Tavern in the Square in Littleton, and you'll get to come and try all different beers from different vendors and support the fire department in their job supporting us. Mm -hmm. And how, like, how does that work? How does, do you buy tickets to get in? Yep, okay. so there's different sponsorship levels that you can buy, and then tickets are $25 beforehand and $30 at the door, and there's free appetizers, and you get to sample all of the beer, so mm. it's a lot wow. of fun. Yeah. Huh. So who's sponsoring that with you? So we just, that one's another one we just launched, okay. um, so that'll be whoever the fire department can get on board. It's mm -hmm. normally them that really lead the efforts in that and reach out to their local community. So. Right, okay. That sounds kind of good, too. Yeah, Jeez, you, you get, should you come get, to all of these. I was going to say, you got chili, you got beer. I mean, all you need now is hot dogs, and we'll be all set. <laughs> can sell you a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, so, so the boot drive in Ashland, right? Uh, like, do you have any other ones coming up in the future for this year? Or are, you, are we past the season? I mean, how does that work? Does it go all through the I know you do a bunch of them. Yep. Um, so it's really just kind of starting to kick off. Mm -hmm. um, there's... It'll go through the end of November. Um, so this coming weekend, oh, this is an important one to say too. This coming weekend um, on August 12th, we have Framingham Fires fill the boot. Mm -hmm. So they'll be out on the streets all around Framingham. Okay. And then the following weekend, I have five departments going out in one day. And then the rest of my weekends through the end of November are pretty much like that. Wow. Yeah. How do you connect with fire departments? Um, so basically the International Association of Firefighters has been our largest partner since 1964, I believe. Um, it's been for a really long time. Mm -hmm. They've raised over $500 million for MDA. Wow. Um, which I might have said in our last conversation, but I'm not sure. Uh-huh. But, um, so basically if they haven't already been partnered with us, which most of them have been, um, but if not, just kind of show up at the station and talk to them, try and get them on board, and most of the time they're more than happy to support us. So mm -hmm. we work with both union and non-union fire departments, and we love them all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know, like, roughly, in the course of a year, how many fire departments uh, you're working with? So I personally work with about 75. Our office in Massachusetts works with about 164. Wow. Yeah. How far away do you have to go to in the furtherance of your job? Um, my farthest one is probably Westminster, so about an hour and 10 minute drive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, so I'm just curious, like, what, uh, what do you do in, like, preparation or in support of one of these days? Your so task look like? it depends on the current situation with the fire department. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they struggle getting participants out on the streets. So a lot of what I do is on weeknights going to either their association or union meetings mm -hmm. and just kind of trying to reconnect the firefighters to MDA's mission and what we do and trying to get them excited about it because it's a lot of fun. Some guys say it's their favorite day of the year. Hmm. Um, and then it's a matter of just getting them all of the shirt sizes that they need and stickers and all of their signs and that stuff. Mm -hmm. Wow. That yeah. sounds so cool. You have a fun job. <laughs> it is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. So, and the one Westboro office covers the whole state. How many people uh, are working there? So, in our office, I'd say there's about 12. We have okay. um, in total about five fundraisers mm -hmm. that divide. Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, is that like all the way to the easternmost part of Massachusetts? Yep. Um, no, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, Rhode Island, they do cover um, part of the eastern part, like towards Cape Cod. Yep. It cuts off right around um, Foxborough yep. is where Rhode Island covers, just because Rhode Island's pretty small, so we mm -hmm. had to share. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, if I was going to be a fan of your job, I'd need the Cape Cod route so I could <laughs> get a fish sandwich. I'm a little jealous of that area. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. Well, you're senior, so, you know, you just need to exert your power. <laughs> um, so, uh, in addition to, like, a lot of these fundraisers, do you work with any of the corporate sponsors, or is that somebody else? 
like organizing that type of thing. Yep, so we all kind of do it on different levels. Mm -hmm. um, my coworker, Dave, who's the director of business development, he's been there for over 25 years. Um, so just by nature, he works with some of the largest ones like Shaw's and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but not to say on a smaller scale because every sponsor is incredible and we really need and love each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. But um, some of the less larger programs and sponsorships I work with. Mm -hmm. um, now I've seen the Shamrocks uh, and grocery stores that I've gone into and I'm just, is it, is it like all the stores that, um, that support do a Shamrock thing or are there other kind of programs that, you know, different stores may do different things? Yeah, so um, it's normally either shamrocks or what we call pinups. So okay. instead of selling a shamrock, they'd sell a little adorable um, picture of one of our campers to raise money for summer camp. Mm -hmm. um, but it's usually selling little pinups like that. Right, okay. Um, and what other, like, other than a grocery store? Can I, give me an example of a major sponsor of a company that would, that's sponsoring you guys. So, for example, um, Genzyme, okay. they sponsor and support a lot of our events, like mm -hmm. summer camp and our galas in the past, like black and blue and yeah. those things. Yeah. So they're, they're providing funding for, like, the summer camp? Yep. So is there any charge to the kids who go? No, it's free for them. Oh. And do uh, you know, like, how many kids go to that? We have around 100 kids. Oh, really? Yep. Wow. For a whole week? Yep. Yeah. Do you work there? Um, I do two days there. Uh, okay. We have Firefighter Day and Sponsor Day that I go up for. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and where is that located? It's in Maine, in Poland, Maine. So it's a bit of a hike. Okay. Um, but, but it's a great great, spot. But that's great, though, you know, because you want to feel like you're going to camp. You're going somewhere, not exactly. just town over. Yeah, and yeah. we have doctors and nurses um, on site the whole week, and every child is paired with one counselor. So. Mm. They have a lot of support and everything is handicap accessible and mm -hmm. they get to do a lot of things that they wouldn't get to do back home. I would just have to imagine that must be so personally rewarding to be involved with something like that. Yeah. You know, I was just talking the other day about how like this world is becoming much easier for people who have different struggles on all different kind of things. But like for here, you know, I mean, a, a, a camp may be very difficult for a child with muscle dystrophy. And to be able to go in there and for the kid to be able to take full advantage of just normal, regular day camp activities and the parents to have, you know, the comfort of knowing that there are support staff there for what's needed, that must be amazing to be at. Yeah, it's the best week of the year. Oh, yeah, I can <laughs> imagine. That's really awesome. All right, well, as we're wrapping up here, I'd like to just, let's do a quick review of some things that are coming up. And, and you, of course, you have a Facebook page, and we'll get that. Do you do Twitter? Yep, everything we post to Facebook automatically goes to Twitter. Okay, yep. okay. So, um, so that's like a really good way for people to get in touch with you. Um, so the first thing is the, uh, is the Ashland Boots? Yep, well, Framing Him this weekend, first. and then Ashland. And then um, we have our Black and Blue Gala, which is called the Black and Blue Magical Night. Jenny, I don't think we talked about the Black and Blue we Gala. Didn't. Oh, well, let's just stop everything <laughs> and let's talk about the Black and Blue Gala. I know, this is a big one. <laughs> All right. Last year, was last year the first one? Yes, it okay. was. How so, did it go? Tell, it, them, how did, tell us everything. <laughs> it went great. Um, we raised a little over $20,000. Nice. This year, our goal is to raise $40,000. Whoa, that's a... That's a that's a stretch goal right yeah, there. Yeah, okay. yeah, but we can do it. Okay. <laughs> so basically this is a gala event where there's an hour and a half open bar. Um, there's a silent auction with tons of awesome prizes like weekend getaways, sports memorabilia, mm -hmm. gift certificates, those things. And then there's also a photo booth, mm -hmm. um, which is a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. And then everybody goes into the ballroom and has a four course meal. And there's a program where we give updates on ALS research because this event is specifically to fund ALS research. Okay. And then there's a magician, which I know can sound lame, 
but <laughs> I only chose this magician because I've seen him in person and my mind was blown. He's incredible. That's what counts, right? Yes. It's it's not the it's not magician, it's the magician oh, yes. we got. Yes. Okay. He is a phenomenal magician. Mm -hmm. Um so that'll be a great event and we're currently looking for committee members for that. Mm -hmm. And basically um, we have a committee of about ten people and the committee's job is to help connect, grow our network, sell tickets, sell um, tables, secure silent auction items, mm -hmm. and get sponsors for us. Mm -hmm. So if anybody watching this is interested in joining the committee, we would love to have you because okay. we really desperately need to grow this committee to mm -hmm. get to that 40,000. Yeah. So, so you have 10 now? Yep. And do you, you're looking for... 15, I mean, 20? I mean, yeah, I mean, the bigger the better. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'd, I'd take as many as I can get. <laughs> okay. And um, so what are they signing up for? Like, I understand you just said some of the things that they're going to do, looking for sponsors and selling tickets and stuff. Is it like a 10-hour week commitment for six months, or what is kind of you envision the, the workload for that? So it's um, one committee call, sometimes in person. This next one coming up in a couple of weeks is actually in person. We meet at UMass Med School in Worcester. Mm -hmm. um, and lunch is provided. <laughs> nice. Um, so basically, it's just one hour once a month. And if you can't make the in-person meetings, there's always a conference call-in option. And some committee members just can't ever make the committee meetings, and that's okay. The purpose is to really help us grow the event. Mm -hmm. So the goal is for everybody to try and bring in about five thousand dollars. Okay. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds. And when when is it happening, and where is it happening? November 9th at the DoubleTree in Westboro. Okay. Oh, that's right next door. I know. Couldn't be easier. <laughs> I know, we don't have anybody on the committee from Hopkinton. Is that right? That's well, that true. needs to change. <laughs> All right, now I know we talked on the last show about where black and blue came from, but why don't you just recap that for those of us who haven't heard. So the fact that we've still stuck with this name, I'm not really sure why we have. <laughs> <laughs> um, but nationally, um, MDA does do, in different states, black and blue events. And often, um, Harley Davidson is a large sponsor of the event. Mm -hmm. So it's black and blue for black being leather and blue being jeans. Okay. And last year, we kept the name. And I'm not sure why we did again this year. <laughs> but people did show up in either black dresses, blue dresses etc so it kind of gives it a little bit of fun I see oh, that does sound like a lot of fun yeah oh you know one thing we didn't talk about I'd like to just kind of get out there uh, is to recognize your state ambassador for Massachusetts yep so um, tell us about her so Keisha um, she is amazing she has an incredible personality she was a fashion major she's the most fashionable person I know um, she has a form of muscular dystrophy, mm -hmm. and she is our state ambassador. So she helps us out a lot by going to a lot of our different events. Like we just recently um, launched a program with Jiffy Lube where they're selling coupon books. So mm -hmm. her and my coworker, Sarah, went around to all of the different Jiffy Lubes to thank the managers and the staff yeah. there. Nice. And she really just helps connect the mission and the reason people are doing this mm -hmm. for them. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really awesome. All right. Um, did you talk about the witch ride? I didn't. So let's talk about the witch ride. It's the last thing on our calendar. Okay. <laughs> so the witch ride is October 15th. It is a large motorcycle ride. Um, a lot of motorcycle people are familiar with it, but if you're not, you should definitely sign up. So it leaves from um, Boston Harley-Davidson and Revere, and they ride up to Salem. It's about an hour ride. Mm -hmm. And um, you can sign up as a Ride to Give member or just sign up. But Ride to Give would be, you'd be fundraising. Um, and it's a ton of fun. We have about 4,000 participants every year. This is going to be the 29th year that it's happening. Mm -hmm. And that um, is run by Boston Harley-Davidson and the Boston Hog Chapter. Last year I said their number wrong, but this year I think it's 3099. And once again, sorry guys if I got that wrong. Okay. <laughs> um, but they do a phenomenal job putting that together. And we have great support from our wonderful, wonderful police officers um, that help make sure the ride is safe. Mm -hmm. and it's a ton of fun. So that yeah. can be che checked out on mdawitchride.com. 
Okay. So I was just I was just thinking as you were talking about that, it kind of like tipped the balance of like there are so many different things going on. So like where where you must have a place where just everything is listed and the dates and how to get connected, or is it all like you just mentioned the the uh, witch ride was its own website. Yep, so on our Facebook page, you mm -hmm. can find the list of our upcoming events. Okay. Um, almost all of our events have a Facebook event attached to it, which you can then find the website too. Okay, all right. Well, that sounds great. It sounds like a lot. Yeah. You're doing, you're doing great work there. That's great. All right. Hey, thanks for being on our show again. Thanks and I so look forward to seeing me. you the next time too. Yeah, this was great. Thank you so much. All right. And thank you for joining us for this program and hearing about this wonderful program. For more information about the Muscular Dystrophy Association and information concerning All About Hopkinton, find us on hcam.tv. If you or someone you know is having an impact on our community, we want to hear about it. Send us an email and perhaps you'll find them sharing their story right here on All About Hopkinton. I'm Jim Cousins and thanks for watching. Have what it takes. Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Hi. My name is Margie Wigan, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history. We're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices. And we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen, and they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us.